Hello, friends, and happy Stratterday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Real quick, before I get rolling on this, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Uh, those would all be uh, massively helpful. Um, and I want to say a quick thanks. Uh, in the last couple days, you guys have been really subscribing uh, at a uh, double time kind of pace. I really appreciate that. And uh, just another disclaimer to some folks, like, I do not mind at all if you don't watch my videos, but right now uh, we're trying to grow the channel. Right now we're trying to reach a thousand subscribers in as quick time as we can. And uh, even if you're gonna, you know, tune in for a few guides here and there, I am not at all deterred by you not watching my videos as much. But if you can show some support with a subscription, that would be amazing. Um, otherwise, enough of that nonsense, let's just get down to it. Today we're going to take a deep dive into how to play the Hexer. The Hexer was released August 11th of 2021, and last updated September 29th of 2021. Uh, the canon name is Faust. The credits, real quick, uh, Cat was the creator, did the concept, coding, and the writing. Zap did all the non-trinket art assets. Uh, Red Die number 5 did all the trinkets, and 54NBB did the animation, while Shay did the sounds. So let's just first dive straight into the base stats. Uh, the HP starts at a 19 at first resolve and will move to a 35 at max resolve. Uh, this is what I consider below average. Um, it's a little low. Uh, it's not really terrifyingly low. It's not like an antiquarian as far as fragility goes but it is uh, the same HP growth as a Jester or an Occultist, so you might want to make sure he's got a good healer or a guard unit. You know the drill. Uh, the dodge is actually going to be a 5 at opening resolve and a 25 at final resolve. Uh, this is average, uh, the same as you know Bounty Hunter, Crusader, that kind of thing. Uh, Protus is 0. The speed is going to be a 5 at first resolve, and at third resolve it will be a 6 and at final resolve it will be a 7. Uh, this is a good speed stat. Um, he's going to ha have some times where he outspeeds uh, the rest of your party and frequently the enemies. Uh, he's got the same speed as a Highwayman or a Houndmaster would. So it's pretty good. The accuracy is a 0 as you'd expect. Uh, the crit is going to be a 4% at first resolve and move to an 8% at max level. Um, this is a good crit. Uh, it's definitely above average. Bounty Hunter and Houndmaster seem to do just fine with this same crit level. Uh, so you're going to find him critting a decent amount. Uh, the damage is actually going to start out at 3 to 6, and it will move to a 5 to 11 at final level. Uh, now that may seem low to you, but it's actually pretty good when you consider what kind of fighter he is. Um, he's got the same damage modifier as a Flagellant, and uh, maybe that should be a hint to how beefy his moves are. Uh, so yeah, uh, he's actually going to put out surprising amounts of uh, utility, whether it's going to be weird debuffs or whether it's going to be debuffs with some damage attached. We'll get into that a bit later. So starting with his combat skills, uh, the first we're going to go over is Melt. Melt is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and usable on rank 1, 2, or 3 enemies. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a crit mod of 4%, and this will debuff the target, and that debuff is to lower their debuff resistance by 20%. Um, the chance of this particular debuff is 10% higher than the rest of his moves that apply debuffs which is kind of his thing. Um, so this is a good way to overcome those who are a little bit beefier in the debuff resisting department. Or maybe you, you hit him with another move and one guy resisted. This is not a bad way to lower those defenses if you think that guy is going to be a problem. But overall, uh, the Hexer is just going to kind of AoE slam everybody with massive debuffs, uh, depending on what you want. So this is not a bad supplement in case that does not work in your favor. Also keep in mind this does full damage, so this is not a bad uh, single attack 
uh, damage move either. Eradicated. The second combat skill is Malicious. Malicious is usable once per battle, and you can use it from any rank. Uh, this is a self-targeting skill, uh, but basically you are going to suffer 3 HP damage and recover 3 stress, and you are going to buff yourself plus 20% to your debuff skill chance. You are going to add 5 to your accuracy and add 1 to your damage for the duration of those buffs. Um, so this is not a bad way, uh, similarly to Melt, um, to supplement your debuff skills. That's kind of his focal point. Um, and if you're getting some resistance from particular enemies, um, this is not a bad way to get around that. So, not a bad, not a bad deal. The third combat skill is Malform. Malform is usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and can target any ranked opponent. This is his only melee attack, and has an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 25%, and does not have a additional crit modifier. Um, this is going to be a stunning attack that has an 80% base. Uh, so you're going to actually put out a decent chunk of damage, and an 80% base stun it's not going to be as commonly effective as, like, you know, a Plague Doctor stun or an, an Occultist stun is, but it's going to be frequently anyway, and it's also going to do a shit ton of damage uh, to boot. So this is not a bad way to follow up on round two if you've debuffed the hell out of some guys and they're you're just looking for ways to be useful. Uh, this is not a bad supplemental attack as well. The fourth ability is Excruciating Pain. This is usable from rank 3 or 4, and targets every enemy on the battlefield. Uh, this is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, and by default does 0 damage. This does not have an additional crit modifier, meaning for an AoE attack, it's still going to have a decent chance to crit, especially if you are trinketing or using quirks to add to his crit chance. So this is actually going to be pretty potent in that way as well. Uh, this is going to debuff the target, minus 6 accuracy, minus 2 speed, and minus 6 dodge, all the way across the battlefield at 100% base. Uh, this is also going to buff yourself. For as long as the buff lasts, you are going to receive a bonus to Malform, that is going to give you a plus 15% stun skill chance when you use it. So if you use Excruciating Pain as your AoE of choice, and then use round two malform, that's actually going to be a 95% base, which is pretty standard. It's 5% lower than standard. So you're going to find that this is a good way, if you if you were going to stun on round two, this is a good thing to prep for that. Uh, you'll find his other AoEs have similar abilities, but this one is good for the stun specifically. fifth ability is Putrefied Flesh. This is also usable from rank 3 or 4 and hits every enemy on the battlefield. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90 and a damage mod of negative 100%. Also does not have a crit modifier. This will debuff the target from minus 6% crit, minus 10% damage, and minus 10% prot, all with 100% base. Uh, this is likewise going to buff Malform for as long as the buff lasts for 15% bonus crit. So if you're crit fishing, if you like to uh, stress heal in that fashion or just chase crits in general, this is a good way to buff Malform as well, especially if y your plan is to shut people down and uh, stun them anyway, because you might even get a lucky kill out of it. The sixth ability is Eroded Mind. This is usable from rank 3 or 4, and can target every opponent on the battlefield. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage mod of negative 100%, and likewise, no crit modifier. This is going to debuff the target for bleed, blight, and move resistance, 
for a minus 20%, and bleed and blight amount received for plus 20%. So if you're gonna if you're gonna bleed a guy for like eight by the end of that round, this is actually gonna buff that up. Um, in that case, it would just give give a plus what is that two? Basically, depending on your team, this is going to make it so that the amount received from all blights and bleeds you're going to pile on somebody are going to be 20% buffed. I believe this goes up when you level up pretty decently, but I haven't reached that mark yet. So if you are running with a blight or bleed comp um, and you're pretty sure that the hexer is going to act fast enough to be a, a big impact on whether those are taking root, uh, this is a good way to... Uh, soften them up so that they take those bleeds better or those blights better. Um, I'm going to be running with a shield breaker later. We'll see if turn order is going to be kind and let me use this in a reasonable way. Uh, but I honestly prefer things like excruciating pain because I like the bonus to stun skill chance. Speaking of, this will give you a unique buff. So when you use malform, it will give it plus 40% damage while the buff lasts. So, you can kind of pick your poison as far as how effective you want, like, a round two malform to be. Uh, but basically, you just choose one of these hella hexes to AoE bomb your opponents with, and then you just follow up with malform uh, with one of these buffs. It's kind of a fun and malicious way to uh, melt your targets away. And the final ability is Icker Incantation. This is usable once per battle, and you can use it from rank 3 or 4, and it targets your entire party. This is going to buff your entire party for the duration of the battle. Uh, you're going to receive plus 20% debuff, bleed, blight, and move resistance. Um, so this is not bad, especially in like endless mode. Um, if you're going to be running into these problems, this is not a bad way to... Uh, Start it off, you know. Um, the fact that it lasts all battle means that the longer that battle is, the more worthwhile taking your turn doing this becomes. So endless mode is great. Um, a boss fight, if you think you're in for a particularly long fight, this is not bad also. Uh, or if you're just like fishing for rabies from dogs or something, this is also not bad. Um, but overall, it's just a fun utility move. So let's jump through the camping skills real quick. You'll notice he has four. Uh, it's very similar to the flagellant in that way. We're going to start with cannibalized corpses. Uh, this is a time cost four camping skill. And you are going to target yourself. You're going to heal 200 stress at the cost of you're going to slow down minus two speed for the next four battles. And all your companions are going to stress out for 15. This is a good way if you do become cannibalistic to get rid of that, if that is your goal. Um, there's other ways you can slow heal that stress off him or, uh, you know, just take him on shorter quests or whatnot. But this is not a bad way if you really, really want cannibalistic off uh, to get that reset. Uh, the second camping skill is Serum 5150. Time cost 2 camping skill. You are going to stress out the Hexer for 15 stress and heal 75% of their HP. He's also going to walk away with a 10% death blow resistance buff for the next four battles, and this will remove any mortality debuffs that he has on him. Uh, this is not bad, especially if your goal is to like get off Death's Door. Um, this is not bad at all, because it's going to help you immensely. You're going to get a lot of HP back for free, you're not wasting food or healing turns, um, and you're going to get rid of that mortality debuff. Um, he's already got a good death blow, and if you are giving him this, uh, that brings him much closer to the maximum. The max death blow is 87%, I believe. It might be 89. No, I think it's 87. Uh, so this is actually going to bring him within 4 of max death blow. So uh, that's freaking incredible uh, as a standard. Uh, so yeah, this is a good move, and... Honestly, if I were thoughtful when I played him more often, I would use this shit ton. Because, why not? 
Uh, the third camping skill is Enthroned. This is a time cost 2 skill, and your party is going to receive a plus 20% debuff skill chance for the next four battles. So if you're running out with a party that debuffs like mad, so maybe you got a man at arms and you're just shouting at people because they're on your lawn, um, and then you bring the hexer with them, uh, this is not a bad way to make sure that that uh, fighting style is as aggressive and potent as possible. Um, I usually find that uh, just keeping the hexer in the party and that's the only debuffer, that's it's potent enough. So this is just kind of icing on the cake, in my opinion, but if you are going for a massive debuff group, then this is actually pretty irreplaceable. And the fourth camping skill is Sanguis Metallica, which I believe means like uh, blood metal? I, I enjoy that it says Metallica at the at the very least. Uh, this is a time cost one camping skill. Uh, you are going to target yourself and remove any diseases you have and buff your disease resistance by 20% for the next four battles. This is very good if he's walking away with uh, tetanus or some, some shit you really don't want on him. Um, so this is a good way and a cheap way to remove that. Um, it would be a lot cooler if you could do it with other people at a cost, but um, overall it's very useful in certain situations. So um, what other considerations do we need to make for the Hexer here? Um, his crit effect is actually going to be an enemy debuff on the target. Uh, with a 120% chance to apply it, um, it's going to add a debuff of 10% damage received onto that target. So they are going to receive more damage while that debuff is on, and every time he crits he's going to do it. Uh, to the targets he critted, of course. So if you AoE and one guy gets critted, that guy is going to be pretty easy to focus fire. So it's pretty helpful for melting people even faster. The other consideration for the Hexer is uh, his custom affliction. So when he reaches 100 stress, he is 100% likely to gain his custom affliction, which is cannibalistic. Um, it's kind of an interesting trade-off. Um, he does act out a decent chunk with this, uh, but overall you're going to receive a uh, damage buff, a crit buff. He's going to become much more lethal, um, and in exchange he's going to have a debuff to dodge and uh, the overall debuffed chance of his skills is going to go down a bit while he's um, afflicted. But those negatives are all overcomable. Like, you can bring a guard unit. The aforementioned man-at-arms would be good at guarding him when he's afflicted as well. Uh, so that dodge is not a big factor. Um, and if you trinket him to maximize his debuff chance anyway, he's still quite usable while afflicted. So you just need to, like, if you can game plan for that, and that damage buff, and that crit buff. But also, just keep in mind if you were doing that, uh, he it is an affliction, so when he reaches 200, uh, that's heart attack territory. So, just be careful. Uh, briefly, party composition-wise, um, you'll notice with his ranks, he's, he's a little bit versatile, but all of his AoEs want to be in the back ranks. And so does Icker Incantation, if that is your thing as well. Uh, meanwhile, if you main, mean to use Melt, you can be in rank 4. So I find, with my typical setup, I usually bring a couple options of his AoE, and then like something like that. He really, really wants to gravitate to rank 3. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're making parties with him. If you've got uh, parties where everybody's moving, if you've got a dance party, um, you want to contain that so that he doesn't get shoved around a lot. Um, typically, like this party here, I didn't include anybody other than the shield breaker who likes to move. Uh, and there's like a buffer in between him and wherever the moving is happening. Just make sure he's in, you know, whatever rank you need him to be to do what you are planning to do. If you don't want to use Melt, he gets freed up pretty considerably, uh, but he's technically, I think he's best in rank 3. What kind of quirks would I go for on the Hexer? Um, I think I would prioritize, stat-wise, I would prioritize like speed and crit, because he's already very good at those things, 
and like most of the classes I cover, I think dodge is very important. And that's pretty much the same on this guy. Um, so I would prioritize speed and crit and dodge secondarily. So Luminous is going to be pretty good on him. Uh, otherwise, as far as quirks go, if you're going to prioritize his crit, um, you could make considerable headway doing that by prioritizing only ranged, especially if you are not going to use Malform, or maybe you don't care if that one gets many crits. Um, but if it's his only melee attack, and so you might prioritize ranged in that fashion, and that might get you uh, more bang for your buck as far as quirks are considered. So, let's briefly look through his trinkets real quick. Um, yep, I'm on the right spot. Cool. Uh, we're going to start with this one, the Accursed Remains, his very rare trinket. This is going to add 30% to his debuff skill chance, and minus 10% to his stress that he gets, and 30% to his debuff skill chance against humans, and an additional minus 10% stress versus humans. Uh, so he's good at crippling humans especially while he has the Accursed Remains, and he's very good at resisting stress damage on humans especially. Uh, this is kind of leans into his his mode of fighting, like pretty heavily. So this is a uh, usually pretty good trinket to throw on him in a lot of occasions. Um, and if you plan on running with his afflicted mode, or maybe that's the goal you want to get him there and then keep him there, um, then this is irreplaceable because that plus thirty percent uh, makes him very very valuable again. Uh, the next one we're going to go over is the broken syringe. This is going to add 20% to his Blight Resistance, minus 75% stress inflicted on the party while he is afflicted, and plus 5% crit while he's afflicted. So this is going to give you an even higher crit bonus while he is cannibalistic, uh, but it, and it's also going to protect your party from taking a lot of that stress from his act-outs. Um, so it, it kind of, if you plan on using that a lot, this can get a lot of use. The Blight Resistance is a bonus, honestly. Uh, but this is, um, if you're worried about the Afflicted, this takes some of the edge off that. Uh, it's an interesting trinket. The next rare one is the Corrupt Plasma. On a melee attack, you are going to shuffle that target. And on a ranged skill, you are going to buff yourself plus 20% move skill chance. So... If you remember, his only melee attack is Malform, his stun move that does decent damage. So basically, how this works is you are going to hit with a ranged attack, which is anything else. Like, my, my primary fighting style with him anyway is AoE debuff followed by Malform on one target. So, if you're running by those rules, <laughs> you're going to hit a ranged skill, give yourself a plus 20% to move skill chance, and then you're going to move and stun a target while doing pretty good damage to him. So this is it just changes a little bit about how he functions in a fun way. Uh, I almost ran with this in the group I'm putting together now, but I only wanted to keep two trinkets on him, so we left it at home. The uncommon trinket here is the Bloody Scalpel. It's going to add 15 to his dodge while he is bleeding, and if this hero is hit, he will bleed with a 500% base chance, one point around for three rounds. So this is an interesting trinket that will definitely... <laughs> it gets function, so like it's not at all the time 15 dodge, but if he takes a hit, he will then trigger to get 15 dodge. I don't know, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you don't mind having a slow dripping bleed on him, then this is actually a pretty good way to add to his dodge stat. And the last one of these that we're going to go through is Appetizer. It's the common trinket. It's going to add 10% to the healing that the Hexer receives, plus one speed if against humans, and another plus one speed if against beasts. Uh, I believe those do stack, so if you're going against both, hey, plus two speed, not bad. Uh, this is not bad for a common trinket. Um, once you're in endgame stuff, there's no real... If you get a lot of trinket options, this doesn't become used a ton, uh, but it's pretty good when you're just setting out. 
as far as that goes, there are more trinkets. These are just the ones I have. Um, and the last one we're going to go over here is the Cosmic Icker. This is his crystalline trinket. It's going to add 100% to his blight skill duration against marked targets. And on a ranged attack hit, specifically ranged, he is going to blight targets with 140% base, four points around for one round. And on a monster kill, he's going to cause horror to himself for plus one stress around for three rounds with 100% base. Um, so yeah, this is this is an interesting one because the the blight you're putting on them is so potent as far as points per round, uh, and the one round is an interesting twist. Uh, if you were going to run with a party that has an AOE mark um, and then follow up with this, this actually becomes a really, really good blight because the next two rounds are taking four damage in between. Um, Keep that in mind. I believe on a monster kill also means if they die of that blight. So uh, this is a good way to soften people up. May not be the best way to take out literally everybody, because uh, you'll find him getting afflicted real quick. But if that's your goal, uh, this also works in that case. All right, so I believe we're ready to go out and show some battle with this guy. Uh, we are, I don't remember if I had a quest picked out. I think we're just gonna go. No, no, no. Are we bleeding or blighting? We're blighting. Well, I can make that work. Yeah, we'll run up here into the ruins for the blight team. It's not a big deal. I am taking her out because I don't want her to die. I want to make sure I get her blood fed. But overall, the goal here is to. Uh... But overall, the goal with this party is to definitely just. Uh... Blight on round one, hit with the AoE debuff, and uh, then follow up with stuns. Pace out the halls of your lineage once familiar, now foreign. All right, my bad boy. Here's some here's some blood for you. Yeah, you feel better, don't you? All right, let's go find some things to beat up on. Oh, okay, maybe not the shambler though. Uh, we could probably beat him, but that doesn't help much showing how it works in multiple battles. So, which one do we want to go with here? I feel like these aren't super damagey boys. Let's lower their accuracy and their speed. I feel like I feel good about that. We're gonna hit excruciating pain on round one. And with that trinket, we are going to hit four blight on everybody. So he's actually getting damage output because of that. A singular strike. We're going to get more blight on most of these guys, and flat out kills on the several. Death by yeah, how close are you? Fifteen. Okay. So, um, and then let's see. You're a post guy. Let's hook you up with that. Now, normally you could, like, bellow or some shit and get some use out of that as well. But overall, I think I'm running Repost Guard mainly with my uh, man at arms here. So I'm just gonna activate Repost, start guarding him, and uh, go from there. Let's kill you. Yeah, he's gonna die. Alright. Well. Fuck yeah. Alright, we don't need heals, really. It's just... Confidence surges and to that as the enemy crumbles. And we're gonna get another blight kill. Oh, no, we're gonna get to malform or melt somebody. I'm gonna melt because I don't need the stun. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. That his blood is so goddamn toxic that he's literally melting the shit out of people with it. Wow, that didn't get rid of his stress. That's cool. That is really cool. You are stuck there. I didn't know that. Awesome. Oh, we got a secret door. I'll get that later. Alright, battle number two. Well, let's try out all of his stuff. We tried out Excruciating Pain. Let's get rid of Roded Mind on here. Um, instead of Mel, let's bring Malicious for now. In Radiance, may we find victory. Okay, we got an invisible guy. I don't have a good way around that with my current skills on. It's a little unfortunate. We're gonna go Roded Mind. 
Just to see, because I got that first turn. I want to give the Shield Breaker a bonus to Blight Chance. Plus, its animation is cool. Uh, so, yeah, I got the Blight bonus on most of these guys. That's cool. So, we're definitely gonna land it. And a couple of these guys are dead already. Stun you, I really don't want you moving. As we might have killed them, actually. Spirits are lifted. No, not quite. And purpose is made clear. We're gonna just. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna activate her post. Why the fuck wouldn't we? It's broken. It'd be crazy not to. Now, if I had a guy on my party that can mark AOE style, then this uh, cosmic icker that he's got equipped would really do a number on these guys, because that four, them no quarter. four blight would stick around for more than a turn. Um, so most of these guys would just die outright on turn two. Their turn two. So that's fun. Alright, we haven't used Malform yet. Oh, we oh, can't find him. Okay, so we're gonna use Malicious. It's the self buff. These animations and sounds are on point, by the way. So, uh, good job, guys. 54 NBB, Shay. Good shit. And we're gonna malform with our free turn. Sedated. These nightmarish creatures can be felled, they can be beaten. All right, we're actually gonna backtrack because uh, this is where the fights are. I ain't here for treasure. All right, well we did get some moves tried out. We got a rooted mine gone. Uh, let's bring that, and that should be everything. We don't need you, treasure. The let's do this. Struck. Oh no, a you're blazing craving? star is born. I got you. I got you, girl. I ain't letting you die. Good thing we are a blight comp, not a bleed comp. These guys have some pretty good bleed resist. You know, being ghosts and all that. Alright, putrefied flesh, let's go! So they are not gonna do a shit ton of damage to me, and the prot they all have is pretty, pretty nerfed. We got pretty lucky on which battle we're using that on, actually. I think I wanna do that. I wanna soften you up. Yeah, you'll probably be dead after your turn hits. And then I want to retribution you. I think both the guys in the back are dead. This rank two dead. Oh, we're rank one now. Yep. Everybody but the big guy is dead. Unforeseen. This is the power of the hexer, man. He is wrecking people's faces. I believe we got one more move to show off, but I could be wrong. We're gonna do this. Yeah, yeah, we got Icar Incantation. It's a very useful, interesting buff. We're gonna get the stun that I would have done otherwise. Nope. Those are posts, though. One's limits. So vicious. And there it is. Boom goes the dynamite. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Well, that should do it. I think I've shown off enough of this stuff here for the combat section. So if you want to have some fun with AoE debuffs, or if you just love debuffers in general, this is a very good one. So, you should probably try out the Hexer today. Uh, give it some love. It's a good class. Uh, otherwise, we've got another um, Let's Play coming up on Wednesday. Tune in for that if you're interested. And another guy coming up next Saturday. Uh, just a quick shout-out. I, I apologize for missing last weekend on this. Uh, shit's been hectic. It's maybe calming down a little bit. We'll see. But, thanks for tuning in. Uh, and you still watching that? If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and share this with somebody else who might like it. Anyway, thanks for watching. 
Stay frosty.